So is it 2020 or 1968? As far as this problem of law and order is concerned, I am for law and order and for reestablishing freedom from fear. That's the difference between Nixon and Wallace. Once again, people are protesting for change to save their very lives. And just like before, our leaders are starting to twist the conversation to be about violence in the streets. We will have law and order on the streets of this country for every American. In 1968, millions took to the streets to protest the Vietnam War, the assassinations of Dr. Martin Luther King and then Robert Kennedy, and the racial injustice Black Americans experienced on a daily basis. Now, historically, if such protests occurred during a presidential year, the conversation rhetoric shifts from the root causes of the protests to the resulting unrest. Instead of dead or battered black bodies, windows and buildings become the critical issue to discuss. During the protest of the 60s, instead of answering the call of millions of Americans who chose to use their First Amendment right to advocate for justice and systemic change, many politicians chose to capitalize on that unrest to create a divisive form of political capital that obscured the change that millions were demanding. In recent years, crime in this country has grown nine times as fast as population. At the current rate, the crimes of violence in America will double by 1972 and to rebuild respect for law across this country. I pledge to you, the wave of crime is not going to be the wave of the future in America. And it worked. The history since then has been the rise of mass incarceration and the continuing failure to address racism in a real fundamental way. And if you compare the 1968 political response to protests that included violence to what we have seen in 2020, almost identical. Seemingly, every week, there is a new instance of police violence committed against Black people that's caught on camera and broadcast to the world. And across this country, Millions of people have taken to the streets to protest the persistent murder of black people at the hands of police. However, as people voice their frustration with our country's broken system of policing and their desire for change, their leaders have changed the conversation from the root causes of the protests, police violence, to the nature of the response. Both presidential campaigns have published ads that have criticized the protesters in this way. Chaos and violence and their calls for defunding police would make it worse. President Trump is making it stop. I want to make it absolutely clear. Rioting is not protesting. Looting is not protesting. It's lawlessness. But where's the change? Millions of people in the streets for months. And where is the change? To the extent that there are any acts of violence or property destruction by Black Lives Matter protesters, it's the manifestation of an overwhelming frustration within communities that have been terrorized by police for the last hundred years. Remember, police murder of Black people didn't just begin with George Floyd. Just to use a century as an example, Riots in Chicago in 1919 brought up the exact same issues. The question is not why protests became violent. The question is why these protests are still necessary. Say her name! Say her name! Say her name! Her name. Her street! Her street! Her street! Her street! Focusing on protests instead of their root cause obscures the original driving force behind all of the protests, the ongoing acts of violence perpetrated by the police. This creates a vicious feedback loop 
that ultimately prevents the systemic change that American people have been demanding. Instead of calling for an end to protest, our leaders should acknowledge the need to end the racist and violent policing that creates the need for a protest. If there's no violent and racist policing, people won't be in the streets protesting against it.